الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي رسول أولو الأمر منكم and always remind to myself and have the courage so daif oh miskeen oh zalim oh jahal and before the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah Allah gave us a life in which to see the holy month of Ramadan and inshaAllah to be dressed by its lights and its blessings if Allah find acceptance in our actions and in our deeds. And that alhamdulillah Allah granted us all these gifts within the holy month of Ramadan and one is the immense blessings of the birth of Imam Jafar as Sadiq that a immense lover of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and a immense shining star in the family of Sayyidina Muhammad an immense inheritor of the way and the reality and all the secrets of the Divinely Presence. And we pray that His nazar be upon us, His love to be dressing upon us and from the oceans of His haqqaiqs to rain upon our soul. These are the great stars of Divine Reality. And when we teach from the world of light that when Allah wanted to give Sayyidina Ibrahim a yaqeen, make him to be from awliyaullah and to grant him to be of a certainty. And Allah describes in Qur'an that we open for him the malakut and that's a, a sign that when Allah want to grant the servant a certainty and Divinely knowledges, it's not going to be from mulk, it's not going to be from the physical horizon but from the spiritual horizon. And that the servant has to be inspired towards a spiritual path. That's the first step for Allah to open is that this servant, I want them to achieve my Divinely realities and I direct within their heart to seek a spiritual path. And these spiritual paths that their their compass and their identity is malakut, the heavenly and Divinely world of lights and realities. And Allah granted that ascension for Sayyidina Ibrahim which was always deep in contemplation that as a child he was put into a cave and the, the incidences he had, the love he had for Allah and the non-interest in the idolatry of his community, that his, his power was great and his family hid him in a cave for many years of his life. And he was one whom was deep in the world of contemplation and realities. And for us Allah gives us this qissa, this understanding within Holy Qur'an of that ascension because it's an immense reality in the world of malakut. That when Sayyidina Ibrahim and this just the summary was seeking Divine realities and, and contemplating the Divinely Presence and how to reach to the Divinely Presence, he came upon the stars and the station of the stars. And he, he wondered, if this is my Lord and the use of the word Rabb in Qur'an, that he came to the Arbab because within the world of light and in the heavens are the lofty stations and the lordly souls. He came upon the stars and he wondered if this was my Lord and he said, no because it has a, a setting, it's not something of an origin. He came upon the station of the moon and he wondered if this was my Rabb and he said, no and he went. And then the next station in which Allah opened the reference from Allah's Divinely words in Holy Qur'an, Ayatul Akbar, that he came upon one of Allah's Akbar, great signs, the great signs of Allah which was the shams and the sun and went through that reality and realized, no this is not Allah and I will direct myself 
towards Wajikul Kareem, the Divinely Face which is beyond the realm of creation and that it's a sun that never sets, means that which is eternal and that's why Surat Yaseen describes, everything perishes but the Holy Face. And that our lives are to rise above the want of creation and moving above the ocean of creation from mulk then into the ocean of malakut and even within the malakut they rise above the stations of maqams and paradises and they ask from Allah grant us from that which never perishes and that's your Divinely Face and Holy Face. And Allah describes them in Qur'an, they feed you, they are a class of awliya who feed you and we've gone over what those categories of people whom they feed but they ask nothing from you, they only ask from Waj Allah, from the face of Allah their reward. Means then for us to understand that Sayyidina Ibrahim is, is divulging for us these heavenly stations. That the station of the stars is the Diwan and awliya and that in the ascension it's not just the, somebody meditating in the dark and shooting up into the heavens and to the abyss of black and darkness but it's teaching that in that association when Allah wants to guide the servant that's why the muraqabah and the contemplation, the madad and the connection is so that the shaykhs teach the servants that you have to rise to the association of the stars. And that's when Prophet then becomes to… comes to us to define that my companions they are all like stars on a dark night. Means they, they represent the symbol of a star in which it lost its mass and it reached its eternity. So the sun for us, why it's Ayatul Akbar? Because it represents eternity. The planets they come and they go, everything upon the planets they live and they die. That which is eternal for our understanding and the symbol of eternity is the light and is the sun. And the association of stars means he reached to an association of awliyaullah whom they rose above the limitations of their mass and as a result of breaking through from their mass they reach their energy reality and they reach the reality of their light and that was the association of stars. So means that when they entered into that association that's why when they make the muraqabah, they make the contemplation, they connect their heart. They're asking to enter into these associations and to this Diwan and awliya which is the spiritual association of stars. Those whom they rose above their mass and the limitation of their mass and that they operate from the reality of their light. And he's describing that, I went into their association and they Rabbaniyoon. For how someone can be a Prophet of Allah and to be confused but he wants to give us that their lights are so immense, so beatific that they are of a <coughs> lordly nature. That's why the adab in Islam comes to perfect the adab. Allah is Allah, Allah the Creator is the Creator. All of this exists within the oceans of creation and Allah when He wants to honour the creation he gives to them a Divinely dress but not to be confused with Allah, Allah is Allah and creation is creation. But the lights that they have of a Divinely dress, a beatific light, that's why then thinking that these are my lords because these are the arbab and the lordly souls in which Allah has dressed them with immense lights and immense blessings and immense responsibilities of what we described last night. The responsibility of these souls like stars on a dark night, imagine what type of responsibilities Allah has given to these souls and that they are 
their operation is of a lordly nature that Allah's qudra and power dressing upon them. And then Sayyidina Ibrahim draws our attention, then I came to the moon. And again the moon is representing Maqam al-Fardani and the moon represents the highest of the awliyaullah from the association of stars that is the watcher over the earth. The high station, the reality in which that soul and that individual watches over the inhabitants of this creation, this earth. He came into that association of its Rabbaniyoon, its lordly nature and then again understood that this is not Allah they are reflections of a Divinely light. And then again now more into his ascension he came to Ayatul Akbar. The greatest of the signs for our galaxy to understand is then the shams and the reality of the shams. What we talked about last night is a light in which illuminates, a light in which we get our eyesight and vision, a light in which we receive our breath by its power and its reality. And Allah is giving for us, this is Ayatul Akbar, this is a great sign of Allah this is the sign of eternity and that's why so many people took to worshipping the sun because of its immense power, immense reality but in inappropriate understanding that worshipness is for Allah but these are the signs of Allah's greatness. And that's the, the difference and the azimat of Islam comes to teach us, these are all the signs of Allah and the immense power in which He has put within these creations. And Ayatul Akbar then for us is to understand the immensity of that light and that the sun represents eternity in our existence, that everything is of a temporary nature. And the only thing that we can look out as a continuous reminder is that you look out to the sun and that's why it brings pleasure, that's why it brings warmth, that's why it brings so, so many realities upon the physicality, brings a healing upon the physicality. But anytime we're contemplating and want to remember eternity we look to the sun. That light, that sun is the same sun that Sayyidina Adam saw. The Sayyidina Musa saw, the Sayyidina Sulaiman saw, the Sayyidina Isa saw and the Sayyidina Muhammad saw. When we look at that sun and looking at the same sun that they saw and that represents for me to recalibrate myself always that there is eternity and that that light is superior and that that light controls everything. And that's what we talk that that sun's gravitational pull and its light nourishes us and holds the 11 planets within their orbit. And the sun's energy reaches with its photons from here all the way to the outermost reaches of our galaxy and nothing can stop its photon from travelling. Not a wall, not a earth, it moves through every plane, every planet every earth, every leaf, every flower means as it's moving it's sending signals and coordinates and energy. It's a continuous Wi-Fi for us just to understand because we're not there yet. For our life is still wired. We don't understand how a device could send a signal and power all our devices but a day coming that will replicate the understanding of the sun where Every device will be powered with nowhere to put it, it's just wireless energy signal that will be powering it. When we reach that then we understand how every leaf, every raindrop, everything requires a signal. Everything needs its understanding and its guidance and its energy to be existing. And it never even leaves the signal, as one signal's coming, another signal's coming, another signal coming, nothing ever leaves this orbit of signals from this entire galaxy. And this is Ayatul Akbar, this is the oceans of power, these are the, the oceans of power that energize and have immense reality from unseen creatures whom they take their energy 
from the sun. They actually take their devices into the sun to receive its energy. So all of these, all of these realities are from the world of light and malakut that the light is magnetic, the light is, is a magnet that draws us to it. As the sun is drawing our planet, it draws us to its reality, it dresses us from its reality. For if you lived in a place with no sunlight and no benefit of sunlight, the depth of despair that would enter into a person because they require that energy, they require that light, they require the warmth of that reality means then it gives us an immense understanding of the importance of the Muhammadan light because this light and the sun's light is an imitated light. These are all the symbols of dunya which are imitated and the haqqaiq and the reality its source is Nur Muhammadi, Nur al-Anwar wa Siddat al-Asrar and what we call Nur al-Huda the guiding light, the light of all guidance means its reality is in the understanding of Muhammadun Rasulullah and that that Muhammadan reality and its samadiya, its ahadiya and samadiya dress in which Allah made the light of Prophet for the entire universes, not even this galaxy, made it from his oceans of ahad. That from Allah's unique ocean of ahad that nothing is like unto it, Allah took from that ahad and brought that reality. That there will be nothing like your light, nothing of any nature even close to that light. And then Allah brought from oceans of samat, Allah's oceans of samat is that it is self-sustaining. That's why the symbol of a star because it's a glimpse of that reality. The symbol of that star is that it's samadhiya, nobody sustains it, nobody powers it but everybody takes the power of it. We are on the lowest scale of understanding because we're using combustible, combustible power. We are exploding things to make power. But all of the higher realm of knowledges, they understood that Allah is giving us an eternal infinite source of power which is the sunlight. But because mankind is at a point in which they want to make money from energy, they're using fossil fuels and things that are combusting and exploding. But the real energy and the higher levels of beings, understandings of energy, it's all free from sun. And they're taking the plasma, the rays and the energy of the sun as an eternal battery pack. And they use it as a Wi-Fi charger wherever their devices are moving, it's taking from the power of the sun. Means the immensity of that Muhammadan light and its haqqaiq and its ability to dress and bless. That is why, why this is being taught is because this is ocean of guidance. That why you have to meditate? Why do I have to contemplate? Why do I have to make the connection? But then on the same email, please guide me and please keep me guided. Please help me to reach Allah's satisfaction. That's the reality that how are we going to guide ourselves to a coordinate when every other magnet is pulling us in different directions. Everything has a magnetic charge, it pulls us in that direction, it takes our desire in our heart and directs us. So the most important organ that we have is the heart and the heart is like a magnet that what you direct it to it will be attracted. And this material world and everything within it 
is also magnets and each magnet is pulling people towards its direction. And then the reality and the understanding, the breaking down of guidance is this understanding that why I have to take a shaykh, why I have to learn muraqaba, why I have to do all these things, I'm just worshipping Allah. So no, but Allah is giving to us an understanding that your imitated worshipness unless it's connected to that magnet, connected to that source, you're going to be distracted by everything in this material world even now more because the immensities of the material world and how much they're putting a charge upon people. So it means that I make my muraqabah, I make my connection, I found the way towards the shaykhs and they describe the Muhammadan love. Why? Because my heart is a magnet, I have to activate that magnet. As soon as I activate it with dhikr and polishing and cleaning the surface of my magnet and then its charge and its juzbah is this immense love for the Divinely Presence and the love of Prophet So then by learning then how to meditate, how to breathe and how to connect, how to love Prophet more than I love him, myself, my magnet becomes activated and that's the reality of guidance. Their job is to activate the hearts of people, help them to polish their heart, direct their heart towards the most powerful and eternal magnet of Allah And that's all under tawheed, all under the worshipness of Allah because it's La ilaha illallah and the only way to reach La ilaha illallah is through the door of Muhammadun Rasulullah Means anything other than that is like an idol that blocks us from Allah's presence because their name not associated with Allah's name. When Allah is describing for us, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah, only way to me is through the door of Muhammadun Rasulullah And that reality and the immensity of that guidance, so with this love, with this ish, that when we do the zikr, we do the contemplating then we're realizing our heart is a magnet and that which I directed to that love, directed to the ishq of Prophet Every time I make salawat I'm making a zikr, I make istighfar to clean my magnet, I make salawat to charge my magnet. And that's why Prophet described, if you make one salawat what happens? your magnet will have called my magnet and I will come to ten praisings upon you. It gives the humility of saying that Allah will release my soul to come and make ten praisings upon you but the adab for us to always understand is that I will go begging into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad With every salawat Allah will open the soul go into the presence to receive your ten gifts, your ten salawats, whatever gifts that are imaginable upon your soul with that association, that becomes the infinite power of Durood al-Sharif and Salawat al-Nabi It powers the magnet, it builds the love and keeps your heart in the presence of that Nurul Huda. So imagine that presence, that light, that dress. Anybody wants to read Qur'an, make salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad That is the light of Qur'an, what Prophet want to give to you ten times? He's going to convey the lights of Qur'an upon the souls of people. This is our magnet, this is our guidance, this is what keeps us on our path. Through every difficulty imagine when the world is directing you in a different direction and you're, you're from the muhibeen and ashiqeen that your magnet is facing Prophet and a strong dunya connection begins to distract you. What happens? 
make your durood sharif so that your magnet goes back and calibrates. That's why they keep giving the durood sharif, they say, oh you're sick make this salawat, you're, you're anxious make this salawat, you have doors closed make this salawat. Why? So that your soul's magnet calibrates to the one whom can give everything. If you're short on anything, any door that's closed, any difficulty, sickness, anything that's happening with durood sharif the magnet directs itself and what we said from La ilaha illallah will flow through Muhammadun Rasulullah and reach to the servant. And that becomes the proper adab so that they are not asking Allah alone but they're asking through their durood and through their salawat that by this love Ishq when I'm praising upon Prophet and have durood, all the different durood, their durood for opening, durood for rizq, durood for sickness, all of these. Why? Because if Prophet begins to pray back, all of it is a shifa and a healing, all of it is with permission of Allah energized and dressed by the realities of Allah upon that durood and that was the sharia of du'a for Ahl Sunnah. That if you want your du'a to be accepted praise Prophet before, make your du'a and close the du'a with salawat. So between the two salawats that are infinitely going to the heaven and they're never checked, that du'a will be inserted within that reality. Every other du'a has to be checked. If negative energy, what's the intention, what's, what's the servant trying to achieve? But between the salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad the du'a that's packed in the middle and the salawat it encases the prayer and goes without any type of security check because the durood itself has cleansed everything, took every negativity, every bad intention out, the durood and pak make everything to be purified and perfected and reach towards the Divinely Presence. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding and open for us the immense lights, immense blessings and the immense understanding of lights of guidance and with ishq and love is the only way towards that guidance inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon. Wa salaamu ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha <coughs>